okay, I totally understand. There's no pressure to buy anything. You know, just let me know. Keep my number. If anything changes, give me a call. And it's so wimpy. how to overcome objections in your sales conversations. This is a really critical skill. There's far too many people out there that are just not confident with it. They haven't quite learned how to own it. And as a result, you get these types of things going on. Somebody says to you, well, I really like it, but it's just not in the budget right now. And you find yourself going, okay, I totally understand. There's no pressure to buy anything. You know, just let me know, keep my number. If anything changes, give me a call. And it's so wimpy. Your job as a salesperson is to help them figure out what their needs are, to fill the need, and help them get out of their own way so that they can actually get the things that they need. That is your job as a salesperson. So here we're gonna cover overcoming objections and it's a really super simple process. There are four things that you do to overcome objections in the sales conversation. Number one is you acknowledge what their concern is. That's important. Have you ever told somebody an objection and said, well, I just don't have time right now, and they're like, oh yeah, yeah, no big deal. But if you did this right now anyway, or you say, I just can't afford it, it's not in the budget, and they're like, oh, sure, no problem. You can just put it on a credit card. And they just jump right in really quickly like they didn't even hear what you said. How does that make you feel? Not real valued a little annoyed and kind of like you just want to get out of there. So what we're going to do differently is we're going to acknowledge what they said. Okay, so it sounds like you're interested in the product, but you're just not sure if now's the right time. Is that accurate? And then they say yes, and they're like, oh good, she's actually listening to me. And they will stay plugged in to have the conversation because they feel valued and heard. The second tip for overcoming objections after we acknowledge the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to ask a question. The question will open doors inside of their mind to keep the conversation rolling. So for example, if we got the objection of time. So what I'm hearing is you're interested but you're just not sure if this is the right time. Is that accurate? Yes. Okay, well can I ask you a question? If you were to do this now, what would be the benefits? Okay, so now you've asked a question and now they can start having a conversation with you again and it just continues the conversation forward. The third thing that we're going to do when we're overcoming objections is to get permission. We're going to ask if we have permission to brainstorm with them, ask if we have permission to share some information with them, and that's going to allow us to be able to continue that conversation in a way that is not combative. So many times when people are overcoming objections, it goes like this. The person gives them an objection, they give them more information. The client gives you an objection, you give them more information. It just feels like this back and forth and back and forth, and it is aggressive and it's combative, and they may buy from you, but your return rate's gonna be high, and they are likely to not buy from you again, so maybe you got the deal, but you lost the client. That's not what we want. We wanna create a good, yummy environment where our clients love the experience of being sold to. So we acknowledge what they said, we ask a question to keep the conversation going and circle it back around, and then we get permission, and then we share with them our information. So that's the fourth step, is to give them the information. So if they're saying, I don't have money, and you know that you have payment plans, don't just jump into saying, oh, well, we could split it up into a payment plan. Ask them some more questions first, because here's the secret with objections. Oftentimes, what they tell you is the objection it's not the real objection. It's not the thing that's going to keep them from 
saying yes. It's the thing that they think you will take and run with because it sounds like a really good excuse, right? And here's the other thing. You can plan this out and you can practice this out beforehand because the majority of your objections will probably be the same three or four, maybe five objections that you just get over and over and over again. Maybe in your industry, it's money, it's time, it's um, I have to get approval from somebody else and it's um, I the money spent for this year and we're gonna have to do it in next year's budget so maybe you get those four objections over and over again or maybe you get um, I have to ask my spouse and um, I don't know if this is actually gonna work or if it's right for me and fear and something else but Whatever your business is, you probably get the same objections pretty much over and over again. Occasionally, I get one from clear out of left field and I'm like, whoa, where did you come from? Um, but if I follow the process, I can, I can overcome any objection. Now, here's the last thing to remember about overcoming objections. Your job is to overcome the objections. Their job is to make the decision at the end. So you overcoming objections is not about pushing people who don't need or want your service into buying from you. That's not what overcoming objections about is about. Your job is to find the ones who are genuinely interested and don't see how they can do it and help remove the obstacles so that they feel like they have permission to do the thing that they need and want to do. So if you've got questions, go ahead and put them in below. Make sure you subscribe. And if you haven't done it yet, head over to Facebook and join the CEO Spot. It's our private community where you can ask questions, engage, and keep that conversation going. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.